This is what woke me up at 1am. So let's see what happened. Hello and welcome to today's video. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. I'm a former atheist, now an evangelist. I'm a lover of Jesus and a lover of people. I'm out on the streets praying for the sick and I work with some people ministering to the homeless and to those that are in need. And if you'd like to support the ministry, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the bell. So I'd been out on the streets and I'd come home and I was getting ready for bed. And as I got ready for bed, the phone rang and it was a lady on the phone who said, is that Paul? And I said, yes. And she said to me, have you been out on the streets tonight and you've been talking to Jesus and prayed for my son? I went, yes, I have. And she said, what happened? He's completely different. When I dropped him off with his friend, he was his normal self, trouble causer, getting into bits of trouble. I always wonder what's going to happen before I come and pick him up. And I picked him up. He's completely different. He's completely changed. He's really nice. He's really thoughtful. All in the matter of four hours. And I just said, well, he asked, he asked Jesus into his life. Jesus came into his life, his life and he's had an encounter with him. And now he's forever changed. And she just said, wow, that's an amazing. That's amazing. She said, I can't believe what's happened. So she asked if she could meet up with me the next day. And I said, yes. Now we'll come to more of what happened with that a little bit later. And then I got myself ready for bed. There was nobody else in the house. My family had actually gone away for a few days just to stay with some other family. Had quite a few ministry activities and some evangelist activities. So they'd gone away and left me in the house on my own. I got into bed, went to sleep. 1am in the morning, I was woken up by stereo sound growling going on in the bedroom. And it just got louder and louder and louder. Real loud. It was like having a pair of headphones on. It was that stereo sound. And before I tell you what happened next, I just want to ask you, if that happened to you, how would you respond? What would you do? Would you be scared? If you've got Jesus in your life and you know Jesus, then there is no fear in Christ. So there's no need to be scared. Would it scare and surprise you because you didn't think these things were real? The Bible talks a lot about demons, angels, the supernatural world. And by its very nature, being a Christian is a supernatural life. So would you be completely scared and surprised at that being real? The devil has managed to taint people's discernment and perception that these things aren't real. And I was a Christian for a while that lived in denial that these things were real and active until I started seeing them and casting them out and seeing the spiritual supernatural world of God. Or would you react like I did? Because my reaction was based on these Bible verses. So the first one is 1 John 4, where it's writing and telling us about spirits and evil spirits. Verse 4 says, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And I had complete assurance of Jesus living in me and being baptised in the Holy Spirit. And because of that, experience of salvation and the baptism that I'd received, then I knew that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself lived in me and the Holy Spirit, the spirit of power and of knowledge of Father God was in me. Second Bible verse is Acts 19 at verse 13. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had the evil spirits, saying, I order you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, doing this. But the evil spirit responded and said to them, I recognise Jesus and I know of Paul, but who are you? 
And the man in whom the evil spirit pounced on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Here, these sons didn't have a relationship with Jesus and the evil spirits didn't recognise them as disciples of Jesus. They didn't recognise them having the authority of Jesus. These sons tried to access Jesus through Paul because they didn't have that personal relationship with Jesus. They tried to use that authority by not knowing that they were sons of God. They certainly didn't know that through Jesus they were seated in high places. Which brings me on to the next Bible verse. In Ephesians 2, And you were dead in your offences and sins, in which you previously walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all previously lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So through God's grace we're saved. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. And because of that we're exalted in high places, in heavenly places. We're seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. So how did I deal with it? What happened next? I sat up in bed. The growling was getting louder and louder. And with all of that knowledge of who I am in Jesus, I just said, oh, it's you. And I just laid on my side and closed my eyes to go back to sleep, not acknowledging any fear, not even engaging or entertaining of it. The moment that I did that, all the growling just stopped. It was done, finished. Whilst I'm just saying those last few words, I just feel Holy Spirit telling me that there are people watching this that are having night terrors, they are having experiences, they are being tormented. So I just come against that in the name of Jesus. And I just break off that torment. I command the evil spirits to stop in the name of Jesus. And I declare freedom of sleep, freedom of rest in the name of Jesus at night and in the day. That in Christ you are set free. So I'll break it all off and, and declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yeah, Holy Spirit, just thank you for that. And there is no need to be afraid. No need to be afraid. Jesus is King. So I woke up next day. And no fear, completely in God's presence. Spent time with him in the morning, then got ready and went out to meet this boy's mum. And we met her down at the church, got talking to her, and she had a problem with her neck. Uh, she'd had some serious issues with the neck and they'd actually fused two of the vertebrae in her neck together. So she couldn't get full movement. She was very stiff neck like this and she couldn't move and rotate her neck. So I asked her if she wanted prayer for it and she said yes. And I got my friend, the minister with me as well. And the son was there who we'd met the, the first time the day before. So we prayed for her uh, and I prayed that the should be completely healed and restored in the name of Jesus. Now we were in a, a small church hall and there was a massive crack of bone and it sounded awful. It sounded just like when somebody had broken the leg. It was, and it just echoed off the walls. And I just saw this mum suddenly 
put her head shot back like that, then she went down and then she went and go like that and she just burst out laughing and laughing and laughing. And her son burst out laughing. I said to her son, I said, what are you laughing at? He said, never ever seen my mum move her neck like that. She's not physically able to do it. And the presence of God just touched the mum and came over her. And we just prayed for her. And of course she met Jesus there. And if I'd have got into fear, none of that would have happened. So there's no reason to be fearful. Just press into Jesus. Just press into Jesus. Just reread those Bible verses and let and meditate on them. Let the Holy Spirit bring those Bible verses deep into your very being. So where are you on your journey? Let's take a quick look at Jesus. He got up early in the morning to pray and spend time with Father God. He prayed and fasted to deny the flesh. He kept his eyes fixed firmly on the things of God. And it's the same for us. We should spend time with Abba Father. Make time to get into that secret place with him. We should pray and fast constantly to deny the flesh. The flesh doesn't drag us back into the earthly ways, but we keep our eyes fixed firmly in heaven, firmly fixed in Jesus and be in the word. Understand what's written in the word of God, what his promises are. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just bring peace to the people that are watching today. Holy Spirit. Just bring peace. Father, that you just release your peace on people today. Those that are struggling with spiritual issues, that you just bring peace. Holy Spirit, that you just set them free through the blood of Jesus. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you've enjoyed today's video and look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.